When it comes to investing, the sole purpose is to see your account value grow in size. There's a multitude of different strategies you can take. There's some investors out there that are more focused on passive income, taking less risk, investing in more mature companies. However, on the flip side, there's also investors looking to take more of a growth path, which is more thought of as the high risk, high reward type of path. This means investing in companies that are solely focused on growth, taking the majority of their free cash flow to reinvest back into the business with the hopes of growing year in and year out. As such, if you're looking to add some pop to your portfolio here in the new year, then definitely take a look at these three high growth ETFs to help maximize your potential portfolio returns. But before we jump in, do me a huge favor, click that like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into it. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here, back for another video. As always, I'm a CPA and not a financial advisor, so please perform your own due diligence. And before we begin, let me thank today's video sponsor, which is The Motley Fool. The Motley Fool has a ton of great resources and products available for investors of all different levels. And right now, if you go to fool.com forward slash mark, you could sign up to receive their 10 best stocks to buy right now. All right, let's jump back into today's video, taking a look at three high growth ETFs to help maximize your portfolio returns potentially moving forward. But do remember that growth stocks usually add a little bit more volatility, that high risk, high reward type of approach. Let's begin with our first growth ETF, which is QQQM or the Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF. This may sound familiar because it's actually the sister fund to popular ETF QQQ. In fact, both of these funds have the same exact holdings. Both of these funds have the same exact sector breakdown. So what's the difference, you might ask? Well, for starters, QQQ has been around for quite some time and has a much larger assets under management or larger in size. QQQM, the sister fund, has only been around for roughly three years at the time of this video. In terms of assets under management or AUM, QQQ is the largest non-S&P 500 ETF or total market ETF by AUM, totaling more than $230 billion in assets under management at the time of this video. However, this video isn't about QQQ. This video is about QQQM. And looking at this chart here, you could see that in terms of size, QQQM is much smaller, with AUM totaling roughly $19 billion. Over the past 12 months, QQQM is up nearly 50% the exact same return as QQQ. The holdings and sectors are gonna be the exact same across both ETFs, and we're gonna look more at those here in a second. However, the differences, number one being the size, but the other having to do with the expense fee. The expense fee for QQQ, as you can see on this chart, is 0 0.20. The expense fee for QQQM is 0.15%, so a 0.05% difference looking at both ETFs here. Think of the expense fee as the fee that you pay management for managing the fund. So you might ask yourself, well, why in the world would someone invest in the higher expense fee fund if you're telling me, Mark, that they're exactly the same? Well, number one, there's the size difference that we equated to. And number two, there's a lot more liquidity. There's a lot more shares traded with QQQ. So if you're a short-term trader, a day trader, or an options trader, then QQQ is much more intriguing because there's a lot more options being traded. However, if you're a long-term investor, a buy and hold investor, then QQQM makes a lot more sense because you save that 0.05 difference in expense fees. Looking here at this chart, you can see the difference that I'm talking about here in the number of option contracts executed for QQQ compared to the very few that you see, almost non-existent, when it comes to QQQM at the bottom of the screen. This suggests that QQM is again for buy and hold investors and QQQ is for short term investors. Now that we've established the differences, let's take a look at the sector breakdown. To no surprise, technology is the largest segment accounting for nearly 50% exposure rate, followed by communication services, consumer cyclical, healthcare, and consumer defensive rounding out the top five. These top five sectors account for more than 90% of the entire ETF. Now let's take a look at the top 10 holdings which include Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, NVIDIA, Broadcom, Meta Platforms, Tesla, both classes of Alphabet shares, and then Costco. These top 10 holdings account for 45% of the entire ETF. 
So as you can see here, there's a lot of mega cap stocks on this list, mega cap technology stocks, a lot of which you'll see on the top of the S&P 500. The difference is there's a much higher exposure rate within QQQM than there is within something like SPY. This leads us to growth ETF number two, which is QQQJ, or the Invesco NASDAQ Next Generation ETF. So we just looked at QQQM, which was the largest 100 stocks within the NASDAQ. Now we're transitioning to the next 100 largest stocks within the NASDAQ, or the next generation of up and coming stocks. So a lot of mix of mid cap and large cap companies as well. As I mentioned at the start, we're gonna look at three growth ETFs, but all three are gonna be very different. Within QQQJ, you're not gonna see any overlap within QQQM, as these are the next generation of up and coming stocks. Looking at the chart here, you can see that QQQJ mustered a 5% gain the past 12 months, and in terms of size, it has about 665 million in assets under management, so much, much smaller in size. QQQJ is up over 15% though since the end of October 2023. As you can see from the chart, QQQJ has an expense ratio of 0.15%. So with QQQJ, you're still going to get a lot of growth packed in, but it's not going to be from mega cap technology companies. It's that next generation of NASDAQ stocks. Again, diversified, but still leaning heavy towards the technology sector, which we're going to see here in a second. But again, because you don't have the stability of a lot of those mega cap technology companies or mega cap companies in general, you could have a little bit more in terms of volatility with QQQJ. Here's a look at the sector breakdown for the ETF. Technology accounts for 38%, healthcare 22.5%, Consumer cyclical, 16.5%, industrials, 10%, and communication services, 8%. Those top five sectors account for 87% of QQQJ. Next, let's have a look at the top 10 holdings, which you'll probably not be familiar with many of the names here, but they include Monolithic Power Systems, Alnalum Pharmaceuticals, Tractor Supply, Ulta Beauty, Icon, eBay, Align Technology, who makes Invisalign, Expedia Group, Verisign and PTC. These top 10 holdings account for only 16% as things are well spread out and there's not much exposure to any single holding. So if you're looking for less exposure to those mega cap technology stocks and you're looking for more mid cap and large cap, that next generation of potential mega cap stocks, then definitely take a second look at QQQJ. Before we move on to our third growth ETF, let me tell you about my weekly newsletter, The Investor's Edge where you can sign up completely free and get our market recap sent straight to your inbox every Saturday morning. In addition, you can become a premium subscriber where you get perks such as a weekly deep dive where we go into an individual stock and do a deep dive research report. We also give you our monthly portfolio updates, earnings recaps, and so much more. Check out the link down in the description below for more information. Now let's move on to our third growth ETF, which is VIOG or the Vanguard S&P Small Cap 600 Growth ETF. You've probably seen the trend here. We've gone from mega cap stocks to mid cap large cap stocks. Now we're gonna take a look at an option for small cap growth stocks. Although the ETF focuses on small cap stocks in terms of size of the overall ETF, it's actually similar to QQQJ, actually slightly larger. As you can see here, VIOG has assets under management of 684 million. Over the past 12 months, the ETF has climbed 8%, and the ETF has an expense ratio of 0.15%, meaning all three of these ETFs we've looked at today have the same exact expense fee. Again, as a reminder, small cap stocks, much smaller in size, can add a lot more in terms of volatility. So if you're not looking and can't stomach that type of volatility, then this small cap growth ETF might not be for you. However, if you are looking for that higher risk, higher reward, and some small cap exposure, then let's keep going. Let's have a look at the sector breakdown. As you can see here, much more in terms of diversification than the other two ETFs that were more heavy technology leaning. With VIOG, industrials is the largest sector with 19.2% exposure, followed then by technology at 17%, financials at 16%, healthcare at 12%, and consumer cyclical at 8%. These five sectors account for more than 70% of the entire fund. Here's a look at the top 10 holdings, many of which you may not have heard of. Rhombus, Comfort Systems, Elf Beauty, SPS Commerce, Applied Industrial Technologies, Enzyme Group, Fabrinet, 
Mueller Industries, Double Verify Holding, and SM Energy. In total, the fund has 351 total positions, and the top 10 holdings account for only 12% of the entire fund. So as you can see there, we went through three entirely different growth-focused ETFs. We had a mega cap ETF in QQQM, very similar to that of QQQ, focused more though on technology, so leaning more technology exposure. Then we took a look at QQQJ, which is the next generation of NASDAQ stocks. Again, more heavily skewed towards technology. But then lastly, we looked at VIOG, much more in terms of diversification, but small cap related. So three entirely different ETFs, all the same exact expense fees. Down in the comments section below, let me know which of these three growth ETFs do you like best? And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you smash that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.